The reason so many people are angry is because they didn't live the life yep. that mm -hmm. they wish they yep. did. They wanted to be a painter or they were too scared to leave that job. After three years, they knew that they didn't like working at Ford and they worked there for 40 fucking five years because yep. yep. they were scared. Yep. Yep. All because they didn't want to live in a smaller house than their brother and sister. Yep. I like, know. It's humility. Yeah. The thing that nobody has enough of is humility. Mm -hmm. If you have humility, then you're not scared of judgment. If and you, you dance with the universe. That's right. The universe brings it and you say yes. Attention is the number one asset. We are so pleased to be sitting with Gary Vaynerchuk in today's episode. Yay! <laughs> Normally we go around for an introduction, but Gary's just so darn busy and into so many things. Gary, would you do the pleasure of introing yourself and telling us what you do and what you're into today? I see what you all did here. It's so complicated what I do. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Everybody's watching. What I mean by that is, in hindsight, I really am a renaissance man, meaning I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm really an entrepreneur. <laughs> like I have a lot of different things going on and, and the modern entrepreneur, much like what we're doing here with all this filming, I'm a content creator and, and produce an ungodly amount of content on social media and on live streaming and all these platforms. But my day-to-day -day job currently is I'm the CEO of a 2,000 person advertising agency called VaynerMedia, kind of a contemporary modern mad men for the people that understand that. Um, I am the CEO and founder of something called VFriends, which is a Pokemon meets Sesame Street <laughs> brand where I'm building through collectible cards and cartoons and kids books. Um, I, I'm a public speaker. I'm, I, I, I've got a children's book for V Friends and a business book coming out. I'm a five time New York Times bestselling author. Um, and I'm an active investor and I invest in a lot of startups and companies of that nature. I own a sports agency called Vayner Sports where we represent players like Aiden Hutchinson and Sauce Gardner and Kirk Cousins and oh. Bo Bichette. So that's going extremely well. Um, I'm on the board of Charity Water and Pencils of Promise, which are two very progressive, modern uh, you know, charity uh, entities, very contemporary, very effective. I'm very proud of that. We do a lot of work in Africa in building schools and 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 fixing the water crisis that the world has. I mean, there's so much else, but I don't want to really take up the time because I think we're here to like really do the show, right? Yeah, yeah. right. So is this that all? That's oh, it, brother. That's about yeah. it, that's it, okay. But not really. Like, I, <laughs> like on, on this- that's half of it. Like yeah. every day, every day I help my father. Uh, I grew up in my dad's liquor right. store. Mm -hmm. So Wine Library, which is right across the river here in New Jersey. Uh, winetext.com, an invention I made for him. So I'm, I'm pretty active with my best friend, Brandon, and my dad on helping that business. Like, uh, I got a lot of stuff. Do you ever relax? Do you ever <laughs> I, here's a funny one, and this, you know, this is why I'm so excited to be on this show. Because I talk a lot, I know, I'm sure people behind the cameras, and as you've done your homework, you may know this to be true. I, I am very passionate about the people that are sitting with me on this show, you all. I believe society has gotten a little out of balance with our obsession with youth culture, which Amen. I love, which I love, by yeah. the way. Yeah. I, don't, I don't wanna razz it. Yeah. I'm not one of these Gen Z bashers. In fact, I'm obsessed with them in such a good way. Yeah. But everything is best when it's in balance. Right. Our right. political system right now is a problem yeah. because, <laughs> because it's too- it's out of balance. That's right, both to the left and to the right. And so I'm a, in using the politics in the red and blue, I'm a purple guy. Yeah. I like the middle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and I think, I think, as you all know, definitely all of you know, when you were growing up, when you were children, when you were in your early 20s, society put our elders, the people that lived, put wisdom, respect for yes. our elders. That was a pedestal. I yes. grew up with that. I'm 48. I grew up in that real world. You definitely grew up in that real world. Mm -hmm. I think you know, because you probably feel it as you live your life, because you're in it now. We've lost that. Right. Yes. I think that we've put youth culture on a pedestal, but we underestimate how much people that have actually lived life can bring to the equation. Amen. Thank you. And so I'm very happy to be here, first of all. Thank you for that. And so, you know, I think to answer your question, by the way, of how I just got to that rant, I'm always relaxed. And let me explain right. and let me explain why I think you all may know that. Uh -huh. You've lived enough life, unlike most of the kids that watch my content, in knowing 
There are many different versions of life. Some may seem the most chaotic and busy, but they're actually deep down the calmness. I am calm in my chaos. Yes. This was what I was meant to do. Yeah. Right? Some people are meant to be a stay-at-home parent. Right. Yeah. I, my mother was that. She was destined for that. She is the reason I am who I am. Other people are meant to be a scientist or Beyonce or LeBron James. Yeah. Uh, many people are meant to be many things. I believe when you live what you were meant to be, you are calm. Exactly. Uh, yes. I know that what I do for a living would be incredibly challenging for a lot of people because I have a lot of people that work for me that I know even a little extra responsibility cripples them. I have unlimited responsibility. I am a fireman. There's always something, I have 2,000 employees just in the marketing company, let alone everything else. But I'm built for that. That's what I want. That's what I like. And of course there's tough days and moments and even months. But as far as why do I sleep like a baby six, seven, eight, nine hours a day, which is what I do, it's because I don't feel the pressure or the anxiety. Mm-hmm. I'm constantly relaxed. I'm relaxed right now. Mm. Right Is there on. any kind of exercise you do to stay relaxed? You know, it's funny. 10 years ago, I started to get serious about my health and I started to actually finally exercise and started to get more thoughtful about what I was eating. And I lost a lot of weight up front. And it, like, it really was good. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody in that first year was like, do you have more energy? Do you have more energy? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, no. It's uh, exercise has not been a mental or an, a releaser or an energy booster for me in any shape or form that I can detect. What I think it will do, and again, this is why I love hanging out with people that actually have lived life. You all know, and this is like one of the reasons I'm so focused on building my leg muscles. You all know that unfortunately as we all get older, one of the things that's dangerous is falling. Yeah. Oh. And, and there is a direct correlation to your leg strength and your longevity and living life. And I think a lot of, as you know, you grew up in an era where people didn't work out and exercise. Right. I, when I was in the 80s, even for me, like people didn't work out every day. Yeah. It wasn't a thing in right. the 50s, 60s. Some did, yeah. randomly here and there. But now that everybody has it on their mind, I'm actually happy that that's been a positive change. I think a lot of people who are watching, all the kids I'm looking at right now, are, are genuinely in a better position to have longer, healthier lives because they do build up that muscle and there's a direct correlation that. So I don't feel it today, but mm-hmm. I have a funny feeling when I'm hanging out and sitting in your seat talking to somebody mm-hmm. that all this work I'm putting in, I will feel it then. And Amen. I do yeah. three hours of Pilates a week. And it shows, baby. Yep. <laughs> it's amazing. It's yeah. everything. And the balance and everything that you get, you have to... St- you just have to keep moving. You have to keep moving. That's yeah, right. I think, again, this is why I am like, I'll repeat it, and I'm sorry I'm beating a dead horse, but I couldn't wait to do this show with all of you. Wonderful. Thank you. You know that to be true, yeah. right? right? Like, like, again, this is, you know, because you're contemporaries, you see it, you see it up close and personal. Yep. You see the world from a different lens than those kids do. And I think there's a lot of value in that, and you're absolutely right. And the problem is, Luckily, thank God, people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s especially, that conversation's rampant. That's something you all talk about amongst yourselves and other friends in this age group. Right. Gotta keep moving, you're gonna die. Yeah. 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 I think, exactly. a, but I watch a lot of 30, 40, 50 year olds. I'm one of them right now that I'm thinking a lot about this. We're sitting all day. Mm-hmm. Sitting mm-hmm. is our generation cigarettes. Like yeah. a right. lot of, you know. That's so right. right? You're, you're all thinking about this, but like I want even these kids to like move more, like in YouTube, yeah. make it part of your actual life. And in the 40s and 50s, you're seeing a lot of people not move. They haven't gotten to the part where they're as smart as y'all and understand you really gotta do it. And that's where a lot of damage is getting done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But my own kids yes. are in their late 50s. Okay. And they have always exercised every day. Well, that's incredible. But they're. Yeah. But we set an example for them too. My husband was a heavy exerciser. Yeah, and as yeah. you again, as you all know, and for the people that are watching, because I know a lot of new people are going to be watching this show, because I'm going to make sure a lot of people watch this show. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. That was more of an enigma. That it was an anomaly. Yeah. What your yeah. husband was like. That was rare. Today, like it's really wonderful that people are taking care of their health dramatically more at such young ages. Mm-hmm. And get to take care of their mind. I still, and my still stress because of things I do. Now, no one else stresses me out. I stress myself out that I gotta learn to bring it down. And why do you think that is, my friend? Uh, I aim towards perfection for myself, which is bad. Just do it, and if you make a mistake, as I was um, watching some other podcast, and they said, 
you know, yell out, get it out of the way, give it 90 seconds, let it go by. Yeah, the reason, you know, I'd like to double dip into that. Okay. I think this is another place where I think all of you can provide a lot of value to the people that are watching. I believe that one of the great things about time and getting older is you become more wise to the way it really works. Now, you'll, all, you all know this. I'm about to say something and you still got friends in, your, in their 70s, 80s, and 90s that are not doing this well. Right. Some, things, some people go to the ground with their shortcomings. Yes. They didn't learn the lessons. But I believe perfect, someone who seeks perfection yeah. doesn't realize that that is now. A, well, you know, it's funny yeah. that it's a proxy for an insecurity. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fancy word for being insecure. Yes. Right? right? It's, it, and then I wonder to whom and for what, <laughs> right? Because I believe most people will say with myself, but it's actually not as true as they think. I believe that most of us are insecure, and most of us, everyone in this room and everyone who's watching, do a lot more things day to day, live their lives based on other people's opinions. Oh, sure. Right? That may be their parents, that might be their spouse, that might be their children, that might be society, and all these kids, they're growing up with new things that you didn't. They now have the judgment of strangers at scale on social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, mm -hmm. but yeah. a lot of people criticize the Z generation, saying they're all lazy and they're not going anywhere, and I so disagree with that. Same, My totally. grandchildren are so active. And look at this room. Yeah, you not only the perfect Z generation. Yeah, what yeah. more can you ask? Them? And they're all very good looking. I don't know. Did you guys do yeah. that on purpose? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You demanded. Yeah. 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 Look. And again, I say this a lot. And again, it's so exciting to have all of you. All of you grew up with people when you were in your teenage years and your twenties and thirties, and you knew plenty of people who were lazy too. Yeah. As, as if an entire generation of people is one thing or another. Right. There's yeah. always yeah. go-getters in the boomers and X and, yeah. and millennials and there's always people that are lazy completely. Yeah. There are people who are accountable in every generation and there are people who blame in every generation. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you. I think it's a very lazy narrative in the same way that I think it's a lazy narrative for Gen Z kids to blame boomers for the way the world is. Yeah. As yeah. if there was, as if boomers didn't yeah. have grandparents. That yeah. the, like yeah. this, and I'll tell you what this is all about. The world is very good at dividing us. Mm -hmm. Right? Gender, race, income level, country, Sex. religion. Yeah. Yeah. And as if the people, and the world is people. As if people haven't spent enough time trying to decide why we're not the same. Now we've decided to add another thing to not allow us to like each other. Generational. Generational. Like as we ran, as if, as if gender and race and religion We're and country enough. and income level was not enough to separate. <laughs> yes. We've now decided, let's also hate each other based on what generation we're born in. Right. It's really a sad, it's a, this boomer Gen Z thing is a complete reflection of a very sad moment we're in, which is we've really got to reset to loving thy own neighbor, mm -hmm. to putting civility on a pedestal, to start respecting our elders. Like we need some old school shit to get out of this. Yeah, yeah, and what, what, yeah. No, I but, think we, the, the success that this program has had is that we have turned aging on its ear. <laughs> we, don't, we don't ever get fooled into being old. Of course, <laughs> old, old, old is such a silly concept. Yeah. I know thirty-two-year-olds that are old. old yeah. They right. sit at yeah. home all day and are just waiting to die. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. I know people that are doing <laughs> contemporary podcasts. I'm gonna guess you're not thirty-two. You're a little older. Right? <laughs> 30, Thirty-five. 30, yeah. yeah. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. 30, yeah. Thirty-nine. Actually, these generalizations drive me batshit crazy. Yeah. But I'm always saying you have to grow older, but you don't have to act older. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help. Growing older is really great because if you don't, you're dead. That's exactly yeah. 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 That's and when you stop. Well said. <laughs> what doesn't help is today's media. Yeah, that's right. The bad people, oh, they get the, they get news. Yeah. Someone of the same generation did something good, but well, you don't hear about this, it. Again, yeah. this is where I really value y'all. Y'all, yeah. you're 60, 70, 80, 90, have to tell more stories on the internet. For right. example, right. when Walter Cronkite was delivering the news to y'all, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was in the public service business. Right. And then the news became privatized. I love business. Yeah. But business like anything else 
has its shortcomings just like religion, just like parenting, just like government, just like schooling. And when the news became a business, Yes. Yeah. And at Thank some you. right yeah. when it was in the when it was a public service, it it played down the middle. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. When it became a business, and there was a turning point in our society that I spent a lot of time researching. It's when and you all remember this. There was a very famous kidnapping case in New York in the late seventies, early eighties. If you remember, this was mm-hmm. profound. There was and and this and the the summer of Sam. There was oh, certain, yeah, yeah. right. There were certain things that happened in the late seventies as. News became business, right. where the news industry realized scaring people was good for business. Oh God! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, when it went oh, into the entertainment, yes. and, when, and they had theme songs for you know theme music for each tragedy. That's right. It's, and the bar across and, the bar. And, and breaking news was oh, always man. a plane <gasps> yeah. and a hostage and a murder. They're, they're still doing it. Of Car course. chases. They still okay. do it. Yeah. They That's still right. do but, it. But y'all lived through the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I caught the tippy tail end and I like modern history and have done a lot of homework. These kids don't know the world you grew up in. Yeah, and, right. and the stories you can tell about like, this is what the news used to do. Right. Forget about how you see politics. This is how the news used to be. And you know, yes, that's where we're at brother. Like unfortunately. Yeah. You actually got real news and could make up your own mind. Right. What a concept. Yeah. Well listen, and you all know this. I'll give you another thing that I think is a good history lesson for the the youngsters that I'm looking at, but knowing all the ones that will watch this. You all lived, and based on your ages, you were grown-ups going through a contentious decade in American history called the 60s. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so a lot of us right now are going through what would be a stressful, contentious, if mm-hmm. you, we feel it, mm-hmm. right? We're about to really feel it. 2024 election season yeah. oh, is my gonna God. be gnarly, oh. yep. right? Yep. But you all watched what happened, right? Oh. And as you know, one of the reasons that people started getting into in the 70s and 80s at work and even in their neighborhood of religion and politics stays in your house was we saw how much it tore us apart by making it not just in your house in the 60s. Yep. I believe that we're gonna see a very, history likes to repeat itself. I think all these kids are going through it right now and they want their jobs and the businesses. And, like, and we, not just kids, societies, asking everybody to commentate on everything and get involved in everything. And what I think people are starting to realize is people see things differently. Yeah. And either yeah. we're gonna have to take a, we're gonna either decide to just hate each other in perpetuity and everybody, or we're gonna find a way to be civil and give people places where you can, not have to worry about that, like work yeah. and like a sporting yeah. event yeah. and like at the restaurant. <laughs> you like yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. You, I, you mentioned something in one of your podcasts about uh, you think that we are going back to the times of $61,000 a year and, uh, you know, we're going to redo our values. Yes. Could you, could oh, you talk about so. that? I'll tell you what you're touching on. I, I, so like there's so much, right? Again, back to, back to Gen Z. When Gen Z is pounded with headlines saying, you're gonna be the first generation that doesn't have it as good as your parents. Yeah. The fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. what do they do with that? Yeah. Yeah. Of course they're not, like that's, the, so what I think is actually, they're, back to your point, I agree with you. I actually think Gen Z and, and Gen Alpha behind it, there's another one coming by the way, Gen yeah. Alpha, <laughs> the real youngsters. Um, I think that they're gonna be fortunate. They're gonna watch all this chaos. Gen Z's gonna be living in it. Gen Alpha's gonna touch it a little bit and then understand it. And I think, and again, I think all of you can help on this. I believe you all understand that there is no, no, no correlation to financial success and genuine happiness. Yes, and I heard you say that on a podcast and my heart blossomed because I think that's the only thing that can set us free. I do too. And, and by the way, I'm a businessman and I'm an yeah. entrepreneur. I'm yeah. not, I'm, I don't go to this place where I demonize capitalism. And no. Business. Like, yeah. that's the human spirit. I'm not yeah. there. What I'm saying, sir, is the following. I believe more and more people are figuring out, and this is because of technology, because of Zoom, right? Yeah. because of the way at a higher income level, private aviation is going down in cost. I believe more people are gonna live more simple lives. I think we've lived through a whole Oh, century yeah. of I need a watch, I need a car, I need yeah, yeah. materialism. Yes, and I watch yes. trends amongst a lot of youngsters who are starting to get it. And they're saying, you know yes. what? You know what? Yes. I don't need to live in Manhattan yeah. and work 
80 hours a week just to be able to get by. On a job that I hate. Bingo. (laughs) Maybe I should live in the Hudson Valley. I could still get to New York. I could be on Zoom all day. Right. But my cost of living is way down. Mm -hmm. And I just, this goes back to what this gentleman said. I'm worried about who are you trying to impress. Yep, exactly. Because once you stop trying to impress anyone and you start talking to yourself, which is something that starts to normally happen at your age group, not theirs. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to bring your wisdom down to them. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. boy oh boy, could you imagine if you knew all the lessons you now know <laughs> at yeah. 25? Mm. Yeah, back then. Right? Wow. Yeah. Mm. So, right? Yeah. So to me, I think I got a little lucky. You know, it's funny. This is very, very special moment for me. I, I know my mom is gonna smile when she watches this. When I was, so I was born in the Soviet Union, right. in the uh-huh. USSR. Okay. I immigrated here when I was three. I lived in oh. Queens in Rigo Park. Right. We were very poor. I lived in a studio apartment with five, six, seven, depending how relatives were coming over from the old country. Oh, wow. So very humble beginnings. And one of the earliest stories that I was told about myself is really very meta and apropos to this exact second. Even at four and three years old, when I would go outside, as a three to four year old, I would gravitate and run over and sit with 70, 80, oh, yeah. 90 year olds and talk to them. Wow. I would not go play with children, I would go and sit. And it was just kind of the story that my mom would always tell me about me. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. And I, it went into my like eight, nine, 10 years old when I moved to Edison, New Jersey and grandparents would come from Florida for my friends in the neighborhood. I would always be like, tell me what you were doing when JFK died and Man. how did NASA happen and World War II. Like, I was fascinated or like, like I was always drawn to it. And then I forgot about it for 30 years, 20 years. It was just a thing I did when I was a kid, never thought about it in my teenage years, never in my 20s, never in my 30s. As, as I started to get more publicly popular and make content, and I started seeing the words coming out of my mouth were more grounded in wisdom mm. and simplicity, I started realizing, wait a minute, mm. this is why I, I hung out with y'all. Yeah. Like I'm drawn yeah. to it. Mm. Um, this is why I was so, this is the most excited about doing a podcast I've been in years. Aww. I'm drawn to this. This is it. This is the conversation. This, what you are doing, what you are all doing, is one of the most important things we must find a way to make popular culture. We must get back to not dismissing our grandparents, not making fun of them because they don't know how to use the latest technology. Mm -hmm. No, sitting down and fucking listening to them because they actually know shit. Not taking everything that they, you know, there's plenty of dopey 80 year olds that don't get, don't <laughs> oh, yeah. get it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of angry ones too. Yes. That's right. right, here's why. Ah, I yeah. love that you said that my friend. Yeah. Do you know that I live my entire life based on one premise, to not have resentment? Yes. To okay. not resent, yeah. and do you know how you not resent? You don't have these issues where you ponder what could have been. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. want, oh, yeah. I live my life based on will I regret this when I'm 80? The reason so many people are angry is because they didn't live the life yep. that mm-hmm. they wish they yep. did. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. They, right? They regretted their choices. And where they really get upset, and please confirm this and please feel free to jump in, yeah. is when they didn't die on their own sword. Mm-hmm. Meaning, Something shitty yeah. happened and it wasn't even their own choice. Their mom made them marry that guy. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah. Right? The yeah. real stuff. Real, yeah. um, listen, or we're talking about right. the yeah. family yeah. Or they, right. Or they, right, they took over the fort they, and they didn't want, they wanted to be a painter or they were too scared to leave that job. After three years, they knew that they didn't like working at Ford and they worked there for 40 fucking five years because yeah. 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 they were scared. Yeah. Yeah. All because they didn't want to live in a smaller house than their brother and sister. Yeah. I like, know. It's humility. Yeah. Yeah. The, thing that, the thing that nobody has enough of is humility. Mm-hmm. If you have humility, then you're not scared of judgment. If and hum- you dance with the universe. That's right. The universe brings it and you say yes. 100%. I, and, yeah. if, and if you say yes and it doesn't work well, you're still okay with it because it was your yes. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. I, f- I feel very you lucky. You learn. You learn. I feel lucky that all of us grew up when we did. And it was my, our parents were, really were the greatest generation. Yeah. And they taught us, and that made us better. 
They lived and through it. Your, par- your yeah, parents, parents lived, lived through, through it. absurd adversity. Oh, yes. yes. Absurd the adversity. You, you, and, but, yeah. but they didn't talk about it. Well, well, that's exactly they just, what I was going to say. They didn't Please talk about it. Yeah. Family secrets. Yeah. You like that? The, the, yeah. the family secrets are killing the relationship between us and the other generations. Yeah. Explain. Yeah. Because yeah. people didn't talk about the abortions that took place. Yep. They didn't talk oh. about when Uncle Harry got... Drunk. Judy, yeah, yeah. Or, um, or went away for a while. Or went away for a while. Away for a while. They don't talk about it, and they don't and, hear the stories. And and you believe I want to hear this through because this is interesting for me. And I believe that that bred that anger and of that course. hostility. Yeah. Of course. And it's like you hid that from me, and it's like, no, it just yeah, they was did. what happened, and we didn't talk about it. But if we take the opportunity to sit down and talk to them about mm-hmm. these things. We didn't hurt you. I've got a grandson that's angry with me now. I can't fathom what he's angry about. Yeah. He's 30, he just turned 30, yeah. and he's just angry. Yeah. And I feel mm-hmm. that it's based on some of those family secrets. Because he's like, why didn't well, you do this? Well, this goes back to a lack of empathy. Yeah. Right, I, I said something, I saw some of the youngsters shake their head and I was like pumped. I was like, this is something I've been thinking about. To blame boomers, you ruin the world as if there weren't generations before them. Yeah, It's the same reason, I, it, uh, it's so interesting you just said that. One of the things I talk a lot about is before you decide you hate your dad, remember <laughs> that he had a dad. Yeah. Before the, you, you decide you're mad at your grandma, yeah. remember she had a mom. Like we, yeah. we, we, we are so selfish in our judgment. And you know this, to where I think all of you are going energy-wise right now, there is a level of no question, and this is a generalization, but there's, you can see the data. There's, an, there's a level of accountability that you all grew up with yeah. that is not in fashion right now. Exactly. There's a level of blame that is in fish, fashion now no. that was not in fashion when you grew up. That's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Whether that's right or wrong is a separate thing. Yeah. It's just the way people roll. Yeah, it, you, we were brought up by the family. Mom and dad took care of you. Uh, our dads, at least I know my dad, never talked about the war. Yeah. And found out later what he did. Like, he didn't want to talk about that. I, I guess, you know, they just didn't. Yeah, it's fucking. Talk, what it's they fucking went through. War. What they went through. What they went through. Of course. And uh, but, well, by the way, that's a big part of what I think is going on right now. I believe that this is historical in America. One of our biggest vulnerabilities, and what we're all feeling right now is too many consecutive years of prosperity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And misunderstanding what prosperity really is. Well, that's because when you have that many consecutive years of prosperity, it's impossible for you to know. And take it for granted. That's right. Your parents' generation, when you're in the roaring 20s, and and you're you're fucking loving it, (laughs) and you're out every night and drinking, and everyone's bawling, (laughs) and then the next decade is a world war and the Great Depression, and you went from champagne nights in Manhattan to not having bread, yes. you reset your shit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so what's happening is I can't blame anyone under 50 in America because it's been cruising the whole time. Yeah. And, and then when everyone's mad at Gen Z, I'm like, when they got out of school, the government printed money and gave them money to stay home during COVID. Yes. It <laughs> fucked them up. Like, I get it. Like, you, everyone's, everyone's equilibrium is different. Yeah. And so to your point, yeah. like, we've had so many years of prosperity like what yeah. you know this again when you live a longer time when people come like when you hear people complaining about what's difficult you laugh to yourself you're like that would have been a walk oh, yeah. in the park yeah. <laughs> oh yeah right? or, 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 or you so don't lucky. you don't know because as a kid you thought this is life and oh by the way when you used to complain about shit when you were 20, your grandparents were like, shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, yes. Right? Yeah. I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what to complain about. That's it's, right. Yes. Because, because what was going on in the, right? in the late 1800s yeah. when your grandparents were kids yeah, and right. when you're like trying to get the timing here, that was real adversity. Yes. Like, like people take things for granted. We just went through COVID and it was really hard, but like penicillin is a new invention. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, like there's a lot, like, like, I just think that people, this is actually very funny. I was an atrocious student, oh, really? like real bad. Wow. Yeah. As D's successful a, as you are, you were bad. I was an atrocious student. I was a D and F student, not even a C student, a D and F student. But there was one class consistently that I was good at, history. History. Oh. And it's funny, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, man, when I was, when I, when I was this bad student in my early 20s, 
I was like, man, why was why did I get good grades in history, like B's and A, like good grades? It was because I was interested in it. But why I was interested in it is what's happening here right now. I believe that everybody who's watching this and all the crew behind the screen would be much happier if they understood history. Absolutely. Yes. If they could contextualize, yeah. because yes. it's very easy to all of our points. If you hear day to day, you have it bad, and this is that. It's yeah. a ludicrous. Yes. Gen Z has it better than boomers by a thousand oh, miles. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Like these articles are ludicrous. I'm aware of what inflation is. Like, can you please tell them about when you couldn't get gas in America in 1970s? Oh, yeah. 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 Tell them. Yeah, they wait in line. One time I was living in Hawaii and going from the one part of the island to another and ran out of gas and a gas truck came by and saw me and got out and filled up my tank from the gas truck so I could get my children home. Yeah, people I mean, who cared about people. A, no, we used to, days, yeah. Again, you, you all were already grown when this happened. Yeah. People used to hitchhike 24-7. Oh, there was yeah. nothing, yeah. There was yeah. nothing yeah. to be scared of. Yeah. You picked up your... We are now Up in extreme again. isolation. Everyone oh. is on an individual game. You know, you said something earlier, one of you over here, you said, or oh, we were raised by our parents. We weren't yeah. just raised by our parents. We were raised Being by like the, the entire- neighborhood. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, right? you get a whipping on one side yeah. and all oh, the yeah. way. No, yeah, mom. Yeah. I love you, I was just about to say that. Yeah. When I, I am 48. And I grew up in a New Jersey in the 80s that it was wildly appropriate for yeah. one of my best friend's mom to spank me in the ass or in the face. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, we yeah. Wildly yeah. appropriate. And yeah. when you got home, it was you got another spanking. Thank you again for getting yeah. a spanking. For and now, I don't know if you know this, I know you all know this, no one gets spanked now. No. Oh, no. And even don't touch your kid. Oh, no. Trust me, we know that now. And wait, but it's even crazier. <laughs> that I can like wrap my head around though, I think yeah. it's an interesting debate. The one that blows my whole fucking mind, no one gets grounded anymore. That's oh bad. yeah, no, I get grounded. Oh, All yeah, their toys are at home. Not <laughs> no, no. I, 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 of course, there's of course there's a million people watching. Say yeah, I grab my kids, but I'm talking macro parenting yeah. trends. Yes, mm -hmm. you would be stunned out of how many 100 parents right now that have a six to 12 year old. How many of them have ever been grounded? Ever? The answer is almost nothing. It is a shocking world that's happening. We're teaching people that there aren't any ramifications. Mm -hmm. For anything. No consequences. For any, no consequences. Even yeah. the police now are not taking criminals off well, the right. street. They're just letting them go, giving them a little lecture. But, well, letting them but go. there are criminals because they weren't brought up well, that way. Well, there's that. But this is another thing I'd love to get your point of view in. This is why I think fighting should come back. What do you all think? But what fighting is like what? Like fighting, and like Ali. remember when we, yeah, like when the we all, by the way, it's Muhammad Ali's birthday. Yeah, but they, they, oh. begin, they <laughs> begin to, fighting? It, 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 fighting with the fist would be good, but they brought knives and stuff. Fair enough, I'm guns. with you, I'm with you. Yeah. I think one of the things where we lost our way mm -hmm. was we all grew up and like I got into, I fought Oded Weinstock. Oded, if you're around, email me, I wanna find you. <laughs> I, fought, I, fought, oh, I fought Oded Weinstock after school in second, third, and sixth grade. Mm. Yeah. We had a rivalry. It was like Fraser Ali. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> but really, I mean this back to consequences. The reason everyone's running their mouth in the world is because when I grew up, if you ran your mouth, someone punched you yeah, in the face. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's true. I think, yeah. should we bring fighting back? No. No, no I said no. I don't no, think we should bring it. fighting back. I think we should just learn how to prove to people that our egos are out of control and that we need to shift over. Like punching people. <laughs> <laughs> but that comes back to the parents. Uh, Teach it from the beginning. I had fights. Brother, everybody yeah, wants to blame social media. Yeah. Everybody wants to blame yeah. presidents. Everybody yeah. wants to blame everything. This Instead is a parent conversation. Exactly. The world is a parent conversation. Yeah, we had, yeah. our neighborhood was, mom was the matriarch of the street. So and, and then if someone did something, yep. she'd go, oh, you know, Claire, my mom said, did, you know, yep. don't do that. Oh, Clara said it, then yeah, you're right. That's Get it. in the room. Yep. yep. But then there were fair fights back in the days of fights. Yeah. You wouldn't show Do up. That the, the, the Jets and the whatever they were, they, they would bring knives and guns all yeah. of a sudden. They yeah. used to slug them. Yeah. But now and, they bring knives, they yep. bring guns, yep. they shoot innocent and, bystanders. Yep. And what you mentioned is the neighborhood's important. Everyone knew if you can you leave your door open. People don't know people don't know their neighbors at all. Do now, now it's no. scary. It's like you don't even trust your neighbor. Our, leave our door open. We'll come back in a couple of weeks. Watch the key Most here, of us don't know our neighbors. That's right. Yeah, there you go. The key is these last ten minutes. 
right? These last 10, don't worry about that, it's all real. This is what I like. <laughs> These last 10 minutes that we've just been talking. Yeah. The question is, how do we not come across preachy? Right, nobody's gonna listen, right? Yeah, yeah. The last they just go, eh. Look, the last 10 minutes we were talking, we are talking with a great hope for better for the world. Yes. But, but if you're on the other side of what we just talked about, it becomes a, well in our day, well in our day, they're like, yeah. well fuck you, this is my yeah. day. Yeah. So the question becomes, how do we make this valuable to today? S- today? And to me that becomes the question, which is, it's dialogue. It's not just, like for example, you started touching on it over here. Hey, at my age, here's the things that they had wrong back in the day. Good on right. you for having this yeah. fixed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, let's talk about real shit, since we're all here. In your day, when you were in your 20s and 30s, and I know this is a very touchy subject, but I want, I want everybody to hear this. Plenty of men hit their wives in their homes and no one did shit about it. To the moon, Alice, yeah. to yeah. the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I would argue society has done a good job in making that better. Mm-hmm. That's better. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I think one of the things as people who have so much to say, that's just one example, I can give you 30 more, I'm sure we yeah. all have 30 yeah. more that we know are. The we, Me Too thing has improved. Of course, every, Wildly. Every woman, being black in America in 1950, 60, is, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't think they know. And so I think we need to talk about things that have gotten better. better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then things that we've just been spending 10 minutes on, on things that have gone too far. I'll give yeah. you an example of something I'm very passionate about. I despise eighth place trophies. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So called, everybody can win. That's right, everybody it's called eighth place trophies. Now. When we all grew up, yes. when I grew up, even yeah. into the 90s, You'd go and be in a baseball league and one team won and yeah. they got the bread and everybody went home and said the, the Cardinals sh- won this as year. As it should be. And then, and I believe this, in a well-intended manner, Yes. parents were like, oh, like I'll give you an example. When I lost in third grade on my team in baseball, I was the starting pitcher of that game and gave up a run and we lost 3-1. I cried right. for four hours. And you're still crying. I still <laughs> cry. That's right. I know. I, I can see it on and your it's face. Real. It's, and I'm so glad I got to grow up in that generation. But I understand that characters like me that really cried, like really cried. And when your well, nine year old is crying, I get how parents well intended said, you know what? Let's give everyone a trophy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know what you yeah. know what happened to me in my in my life? We went to the basketball uh, state championships. Yes, I love this story. You're ready. We I'm won. excited. The first year we went, we won. Where was this, sir? The Montgomery, Alabama. I love it. And so I looked over at the other team's bench and they were crying. Yes. Yeah. And I started crying. You felt bad for them? I did. You're a compassionate dude. And I wanted, you know what? I'm probably the reason this thing was birthed. This This is your fault? (laughs) Yeah, I found him, I everyone. Hey, <laughs> this man right here. I wanted everybody to win. I get you, zero. Know, you know what's funny? I mean, inc- that's a beautiful thing. Let me tell you what happened. One man's point of view, but who spends a lot of time analyzing this. We got into this eighth place trophy thing, and what we started telling kids who were four, five, six, seven is losing is bad. Be careful. You don't want that. Losing is so bad that we, and kids are smart. Right, you know yeah. this. Yeah. This is where people get confused. Like, again, probably your parents' generation more than y'all, yeah. but kids used to work full time at nine years oh, old. They're yeah, tougher yeah, than yeah. you think. Yeah. Like, oh, like right? with me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now we baby people, 33 year olds are being treated like four year olds. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is the world we live in now. And so we, we, one of the biggest issues in our society is that people are scared to lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And, yeah. Oh, this is what's happened. What you did not feel growing up was there was winning and losing and it just seemed super normal, like oxygen, mm-hmm. like the yeah. sun coming up. Something in the last 30 to 40 years changed where we've demonized losing. This goes back to prosperity. You know, another thing that happens with 75 years of prosperity, parents have other things to think about. One of the yeah. reasons that this has all happened is parents are so in their kids' shit because they have time. Y'all grew up in a generation when everyone's being sent to war, yeah. Like when when, yeah. when the mom is going to build bombs in the fucking yeah, yeah, armory in Midtown, yeah. like shit was different. And so there's just all these big dynamics. This was all long-winded to say the following. Thank you. Thank you to the six of you and to the team because we need more, like I, my hope is that you have 87 
150 more podcasts that look something like this. Mm. You may be razzed by and be like, we invented, that's fine, that's y'all. But <laughs> the world needs 500, 5,000 of these shows. We need to get these conversations going. Right, we yep. need them out there. Mm. Yeah. In their we, well, uh, we try. We give that them brings our me to wanting to ask you about podcasts because in the beginning, I thought ah podcasts. Now I see that so much information like this yeah. is getting out in podcasts. Yes, it's replacing the media. It's, it's replacing the new radio. Yes, right. mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's fabulous. Of course. And again, this is why I want you to tell history lessons. You all. Mm -hmm trying to think of years. You caught the tail, like this will, maybe you were too young, but you all, no actually, you all either touched on it or you were hair young, but you definitely were close enough to it. You were the generation, and definitely your parents, that watched our society go from a radio first society to yeah. a television yeah. first. Yeah. Right, yeah. I used to yeah. listen to the radio. That's right. Yeah. Only yeah. the shadow. The shadow, no. You saw the yeah. birth of television. Yeah. We were right. so poor, we didn't have a radio. There you, go. Uh -oh. there you, go. you went over someone's house <laughs> to listen to the phone. Right, yeah. right, right. The reason boxing and baseball and yeah. horse racing oh, yeah. were the three biggest sports in America uh -huh. was because they were very good sports on the radio. Yeah. You could picture it. Yeah. Yeah. Football. American football didn't take off until the television came along because it's not as good when somebody casts the radio. Yeah. Yeah. But it's an incredible product when you watch it on television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. what, where I'm going with this podcast thing is, what again, back to history, back to wisdom, uh, back to a presidential election. Let's talk about that. John F. Kennedy Jr. does not win, is not the president of the United States if the television isn't invented. If you remember right. this, mm. yeah. yes. Nixon kills, in all the yeah. exit polling, Nixon killed him on the radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but but the boy, did he win yeah. on the television. But on that television, you girls know, but on that television, his He's suit was tight, <laughs> Nixon was sweating. I met him. Yeah. You did. Yes, I did. Really when cool. I was yeah. 19 or something in New York, he walked mm. across a ballroom to talk to me, and for the next 50 years of my life, <laughs> I said, and you talk about Kennedy women, you're talking about me. I get it. <laughs> and so again, what we're living through now, these kids, uh, me in the prime of my business career, we're living through the world going from a primary television society to a primary Back internet. Back Yes, absolutely. Yes. And right, to, to the, where I'm going. And then everything that's old is new, except the distribution is different. Right. Yeah. Right. right. What's different about podcasts and radio is in the radio era, one man got to decide what was on the radio. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Got it? Yeah. Mm. This world's real fun because guess what? You didn't ask for permission. Uh -uh. You just made this shit. That's yeah. right. <laughs> right. And invited you. Yeah, Thank yes. you. <laughs> and so, anyway, things that used to be become new versions. The world turns. There's really clear macro reasons we're going through all this. But again, I know I'm repeating it, but I have so much of it in my heart. I'm just so grateful you all are doing this. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. And listen, will you tell us about the new book? You have a new book. I do. I have a new book coming out in, uh, in July called Day Trading Attention. And? It's a business book, but it's a marketing book. It's a book about all that's happening. So um, the term day trading. As you all know, again, yeah. when you were growing up, that wasn't a term. The stock market was done a certain way, and this and that, and then computers came along, as you all remember. But you, and right, and you could day trade. That's right. Yeah. In the mid-90s, it became a term. And right. why are you on that subject? Please, sir. You, uh, I heard you say that you've never read a book in your life, so yeah, this is I want true. you to. <laughs> He's done some homework. I've read like four or five. I wrote, I read Joe Namath's book, because that's my hero, because oh, okay. I'm a Jets fan. Yeah. I've read very Sorry few books, about that's that. true. I know, it's been tough. <laughs> I've read probably six to 10 books in my life, but it's because in hindsight, I have a reading comprehension issue that I didn't know about. And so it's not that I'm mad at books, it's just that I can't retain information that way. Oh, okay. ah. On the flip side, everything I've ever seen visually or heard auditorily, I remember forever. Wow. But wow. my reading comprehension is very poor. Mm. And to this day, yeah. the team will send me a long email and I'll reply, three minute meeting. Ah. Because but, I need to hear it, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And so this is why, I, like, this is the journey of life. I didn't know that was the case. 
this is some of the things that got better. All of us grew up in an era where schools weren't looking for those disabilities shortcomings. Right. They just thought you were yeah. not smart. Or move along. Yeah, yeah, right, move, move along. along. Now we have a system that analyzes kids differently, does know these yeah. things, and it's lovely yeah. because yeah. a lot of kids yeah. no who, kidding. who grew up with very bad self-esteem because they were bad at school, I got yeah. lucky. I had a mom who made sure I knew I was the best regardless of my grades. I love your mom. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. She really nailed it, and I'll tell you why you'll love her even more. She made me think the bet that I was the best, but if I didn't do the right thing, oh. there she was real know. fucking ramifications. That's what you get she was still a need. Soviet mom. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she gave me that purple, right? She, she didn't make me think a D represented who I was. She wasn't that cliche, cliche parent yeah. that A, 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 A. a, a yeah. But if I was fresh, if mm -hmm. I was, if I was, I mean, you know what's so funny when I say this? Do you know that I never disrespected my mom in my life? I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even, Dawn on it you. It wouldn't oh, even, no. I would, it didn't even, A, I liked her too much, and B, I was too scared to do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's the thing with yeah, my I, I knew, bro. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Both. Yeah. I, was I admired and adored her, yeah. and fuck that shit. I'm not trying yeah. to. I, I, I never like, was scared, because, uh, well, mom was so short, you know, spankings didn't hurt anymore. Got you. But dad wouldn't spank, but what killed me was when he'd say, oh. Disappointed. I, there you yeah, go. One yeah, word. Yeah, that's, that's all it, it took. Because I got caught doing a, we used to call a five finger discount. Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to bring stole some, some shit. Jordan almonds for them for their I anniversary. Get you. Yep. The guy at the grocery store back caught then you. caught me. You better tell your parents. I'm like a dummy. I told him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he said you're grounded. What a, what a different you, world. He said you're grounded for a week. I yeah. said, but I told you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't, it would have been two weeks. <laughs> See, okay, that. that's. That. And then, then, then that's no, what I said. Again, disappointed. And, again. Consequence. Again. Yeah. Consequence. Like yeah. and and it's and. It's just finding the balance. Yep. It's finding the middle. Mm -hmm. All I want for the world, because I love the world, I love people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All I want is to take the good shit that you all grew up with yeah. and leave the bad shit, because yeah. you grew up with plenty of bad shit, yeah. and take all the good shit that these kids have and leave all the bad shit yes. and find that middle. And yep. that's where we're really building a bridge between all the young people that we meet and us, and it's so exciting. So exciting. <laughs> You know what else is exciting? What? Your strawberry earrings. Uh, <laughs> they are very exciting. I wore these. Just I like for it. You. Thank you. I love them. I love them. Well, yes, sir. Can you unpack for me? Um, you, you you said something about um, uh, <laughs> the earring thing threw me off. There. I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought me too when you did that. Got it, got it. <laughs> I, I did respect, <laughs> intent matters. Yeah. Luckily intent still, actually that's a good topic while you think, intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When y'all grew up, when somebody made a mistake, we took intent into the equation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you were like, that's fucked up, but I knew he mm -hmm. was like, today we're so quick to judge. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not taking intent into the equation. Mm. I see people jumping on people for such, I see it all the, the I, little things. Little and things. And out guns and shooting. Yeah, okay, nowadays. you've made your point on the guns and knives. It's there, but it's like, there's there's much more emotional warfare going on yes. than guns and knives. Yeah, yeah. Or they yep. say, I don't care what he meant. That's what, had, this is what happened. Well, that, yeah. that, it's this, it, it's this lack of capacity for civility and yeah. understanding people are allowed to have a different point of view. Right. And it hits powder kids. It hit it in the 60s. Yeah. yeah. You lived in the 50s, you lived in the 70s. You yeah. know what the 60s was. Yeah. And it's hitting now. And my hope is that there's prosperity on the other side of this one step back societally. Mm -hmm. And I believe there is. The number one thing I am is optimistic. Me too. Right? Yes. I Absolutely. believe in people. Do I believe there's some stuff that I wish was better? Sure. And guess what? Every day that you breath, breath the breath, there was some shit that was fucked up. Yeah. And, and a lot of it got better and some of it hasn't. And so humans have done a good job evolving and moving it. I just think we're dwelling too much on what's wrong right now in society yeah. instead of being happy of what's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's gonna make you depressed. It's hard to wake up at 25 or 95 if your entire perspective is it's based on what's wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I believe the following sentence is the most important sentence in life. In life, you will find what you're looking for. So yes, if you wake up you and you want- you create it. That's it. If you want to wake up and decide everything's bad, good news. Everything will, you be, can everything find will special, be bad. Yes. But as someone who decides the alternative, you would be stunned. My circle of friends, 
my algorithm. Mm. I show my algorithm to some friends, they're like baffled. It's like kittens coming from a tree. Like it's so positive. Yeah. And they're like mine, I'm like, you're choosing. Yeah. yeah. You're choosing. Do you, Please. You're yeah. definitely choosing. Of you course. either have a half full or a half empty. That's it, yeah. right? And yeah. you choose the half empty, you're looking for trouble. Can I ask you all a question? Sure. Yeah. Sure. In your experience amongst your contemporaries that are still with us, luckily, how often have you seen people change? Like change. Not, not slightly tweak. I mean, fundamental from negative to positive. Have you seen? A lot. In, in, the, in the fourth quarter instead of the first quarter. Meaning, have you seen a lot of people change in their 60s, 70s, 80s from who they were the first 50 years of their life? A no. lot. I think, I, they, I think they get worse. I, if you I haven't seen in, a lot. If you, if you live a good life, and I decided to make a conscious decision that as I grew older that I would be nice and learn how to be nice. So when I get old and out of control, the world I will nice still back. be, and I will still be nice. I had a pastor that had a stroke and you know, people, they really lose control over everything. Yes. He never cursed yeah. and bad, but they were doing bad things to him. Yes. He never cursed, he never spoke ill of anyone. Yes. He had practiced that his entire yes. life. Yes. And I, I wanted to do that. So Good for that you. No matter what happens in the 80s and, and, and did 90s. You, did you actively become a nicer person? I actively became a nicer person. At what age? Believe it or not. At what I, age? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but okay, go ahead. At, at what age? What, no, this is important to me. This is me getting, uh, this. I want this for me and for everyone. At what in, age would in, you say? Around, in my 40s. Yeah. It's like Good for certain you. things, it's like, this is not acceptable behavior. You, this was you being accountable to yourself. Yes. The way I'm acting towards others is not nice enough. I need to level up. I, right. And I wasn't a bad person. I get it. <laughs> now, I get is, it? Is, is that an example of knowing how to read yourself? Yeah, that's called self-awareness. Brother. Self-awareness. Man, self, when I tell, and you know all this, back to people in your lives, people you still know, there's nothing more frustrating when you can see someone and they can't see themselves. Mm. Amen. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Right, that for us, especially when we love them. Our mom, right? Yeah. Like it kills us because we want it for them. And I think a lot about self-awareness. I think about how does one become more self-aware? Right, there's a level of vulnerability. I think about therapy. Talk about another, talk, hey, there's a good one. Talk about something the world has done a good job with. When you were growing up, yeah. going to the psychiatrist. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh. Taboo, cuckoo, Ooh. bad, yeah. bad. Yes. Mm. Now. People find, and so what ended up happening? We yeah. took out our pain on our family. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we would blow up on our family. Now people have found a way to go to a third party mm -hmm. and be able to talk through things. That's a beautiful evolution. Yes. It's of part human, of right? healthcare. Right? Yeah. That's right. Mental health yeah, care especially. should be at least. Right? Yeah. So, so anyway, um, self-awareness I think about a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think it's grounded in humility. I think it's grounded in vulnerability. Another thing that we weren't taught. No. We were tough, but we didn't know how to use vulnerability to our advantage, mm -hmm. right? We didn't, yeah. we yeah. didn't. And so these are things I think about, but yes, that's self-awareness. And it's, it's why I believe, to me, self-awareness is the great energy a human can have because once you go, then you get to decide if you're gonna address it. Because if you don't see it, you can't, you do can't fix it, yeah. right. right? But if you can see it, then you're starting to choose if you can fix it. And, and I think once people can see it, they're much more likely to fix it. I think when people, a lot of us get mad and we say, you're stubborn. They don't see it. Mm. Right? Yeah. Mm. They don't see it, sir, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The second they see it, oftentimes they will start to make their attempts to fix it. Mm -hmm. But it is very hard to see your blind spot. I'll give you, I'll be vulnerable. I was a very, I, 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 I was very well parented and I got very lucky DNA wise and I've lived a very, very joyous life and I'm very proud of who I am. And I've managed people my whole life because my dad eventually had a liquor store that I worked in, I took it over at 22 and I've been managing people my whole life and I manage 3,000 people right now and I was really proud of it. But somewhere about five years ago, I had a really low point where I realized my inability to be candorous to my employees I'm very candorous in this setting, yeah. as Gary Vee, as a public speaker, as an author on podcasts. But if I love you, like I love Dustin, because you've worked for me for five years, and now it's more family than just stranger. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't good at communicating things that were bothering me. I love the story where you almost fired the employee who beat you at rock scissors. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, that's called 
out of balance competitors. <laughs> That's a different story for another podcast. But but to go back to back to what we're talking about, sir. Mm-hmm. I had a moment, a series of life events, both personal and professional. Where I was like, wait a minute. What I used to think was my gift, which was I kept it positive, was actually me painting a fake picture to myself. Uh. I was unable to be candorous and give feedback from a good place because I thought the people would be scared that they're on their way to getting fired and I didn't want them to be scared. So I tried to fix it in different ways. Mm -hmm. Inevitably, because I was still running a business, there would be moments where I would fire these people and in essence, they were getting fired without warning. Because I wasn't able uh, to get because the you hadn't That's right. Them. And so now, and then it got worse. So that was already hard enough that I knew people walked around Earth that weren't happy with me because I did wrong by them. And I would make the excuse of, well, and which would be my subjective opinion. They weren't good at their job. I let them be there for an extra year. I was, be, I was the one who was mad. And, I, you know, that's what was going on in my head. I'll tell you where it got really bad for me. When I realized my most senior people, the people who have been with me for five to 15 years, the most comped, the most important, They were actually scared, which was my great pride that I was eliminating fear. That is my great, I believe a leader eliminates fear. Definitely, a good leader. A good good leader. leader. And I was like crushing that, I thought, until I had this real series of events where I was like, wait a minute, all of these people that are like literally so close to me and it's going so well, they're actually a little scared because they don't know where they actually sit with me because I don't Mm -hmm. give them candor. And now this has been going on long enough at enough scale and it was devastating. I mean, truly, I can picture myself in my bathroom, looking in the mirror, the moment I had the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where I was Authentic. like, oh my God, mm-hmm. I've spent 25 years patting myself on the back that I eliminate fear, and I went too far to one side and created fear, and I was crushed. But, you back changed. to, that's right, back to accountability, back to self-awareness, to accountability, to change. Mm. And it has been a profoundly positive impact on my personal and professional life over the last five years, it still doesn't come natural to me. Mm. It's still the hardest thing for me. You gotta work But when you go from a one to a six, (laughs) you feel it. I'm not like a 10 like in a lot of other areas, but I'm on my way to an eight and that's good. Yeah. Authentic. Mm. That's the most important, amazing thing. Be authentic in this moment. Could you? And and, and I'll jump in in a second, but I wanna add one thing to that because I want everyone to hear this. Authentic, yes but the way you make people feel matters. And a lot of people use authenticity and candor as an excuse to be mean. Wow. Ah. So yes, authentic, but when delivering authenticity, remembering how you make someone feel Mm -hmm. is how it is. Mm -hmm. I think we've experienced a little bit of that in the last few days. That's right. I think one of the things that bothers me I mean, back to JFK and Nixon. They didn't see the same, the world the same at all. Yeah. These kids don't realize that the liberals and conservatives thing's been going on forever. Yeah. Forever. But the level of civility they had to each other, the yeah. way these politicians talk to each other is amazing. It's like fucking third grade bad yeah. kids. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. No anyway. one ever spanked them. Mm. You should. Yeah. It's always. Do you want to say something, oh. sir? Oh, I get so into what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. that, that I, I, I just lose mine. Thank you. You know, if I'm holding on to mine, I'm not Got listening it. to I'm you. I'm humble. He I'm won't humbled. fire you then. I'm uh, humble. <laughs> yeah. He'll think of it. I'll He'll think, think of, of it in a minute, yeah. No, yeah. The, the, uh, I, oh, I was going to ask you to, if you would. Please. Explain NFT to Yes. Us. yes. Yeah. NFTs, you're going to like this. I'm about to explain NFTs in a way that's going to really bring a lot of value to everyone in the room. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. That's what it stands for. Oh, yeah. It references something that sits on something called the blockchain. Have you heard the term the blockchain? Yeah. This is what Bitcoin sits on. Okay. Let me explain oh, okay. it. Okay. So the internet. Uh-huh. Let, let me take a step back to make this even more explainable. The internet, as we know it, runs on servers. And I don't expect everybody to be nerdy and like technically like deep, but they run on servers. That like. Websites, you call a server and it shows you the website. They run on servers. No different than the phone lines. It runs on servers. Those servers are owned by people. Amazon owns their servers. Mm -hmm. The US government owns its servers. GoDaddy. Owns its servers. Those are servers that are owned by companies, thus owned by people. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. 
the blockchain. There are servers around the world that talk to each other, but nobody owns them. Why is that important? There is an entire ecosystem of technology being run that the code runs it, not the servers. All the servers can be taken away and new servers can do the thing. Meaning, not America, not China, not Russia, not Facebook, not Amazon, not Google. Nobody owns it. Yay. Here's why. What that means is it becomes a decentralized, not a centralized depository. Why is that important? That means the tech, I mean this is getting a little nerdy but I'm trying to go macro. What it's going to do is allow for the world to have a technology infrastructure that is completely fair because no one can change it. Thank God. Okay. Okay. Let me, I'm going very high for you to tell you why I'm very bullish on NFTs. Not the way everybody in this room knows NFTs, which was a couple summers ago, collectibles, art. That's great. I like comic books and trading cards. All of you grew up when comic books and trading cards were worth nothing. Right, yeah. Yeah. And all those Superman number one and Batman number one and Mickey Mantle rookie cards that you all played with that are worth millions of dollars, you fucked up. Yes. Wait, my cousin invented Superman. And when I was four years old, I had all these capes and Superman things and everything else. What do I have now? Threw it all out. (laughs) I wish I bought them at a garage sale from you. Anyway, (laughs) these decentralized servers, sir, Mm -hmm. are a big deal. Let me explain. Back to history lessons. The US dollar used to be attached to the gold standard. Mm -hmm. You remember that. And then Richard Nixon, when he did finally become president, took us off. Mm -hmm. That led to a very different world that we're all growing up with that you didn't. Which is why there's so much money out there, because you can keep printing it. (laughs) (laughs) The reason everyone is fascinated, that is fascinated by Bitcoin, is there's only a certain amount. That's right. As the world becomes more digital, digital currency, ah! Here's a good, again, when people are like, this cryptocurrency, it's stupid, it'll never happen. I'm like, what about credit cards? And when I talk to a 35 year old, they're like, what do you mean? But when I talk to someone who's older, everybody here remembers when everyone said credit cards would never take off because cash is king, right? Right? And and I bet you some of you said, I will never have a credit card because I'm not gonna buy something I can't afford. If I don't think, right? Right? Right. That's something these kids have never thought of in their entire fucking life. The world, right? So we used to live in a world where if the cash didn't exist, people couldn't even imagine it. You, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure you, you actually remember the first time you got a credit card oh, and the yeah. first time you used it, it was like fucking magic, right? Yeah. It was different, yeah. Yeah. right? Yes. These are why I want you all to talk, like to me, a podcast where you get a lot of people and talk about what it was like when the world moved from just cash to credit cards would then help these kids understand why cryptocurrency is an interesting debate, and a important. foregone conclusion or wherever they take it. So NFT, sirs, ready for this? Yes. Contracts, your, your, your marriage license, the deed on your home. As you all know, you grew up in an era where safety deposit box really mattered. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. yeah. Because there were certain pieces of paper that all of us were petrified of losing. I still have that. So That's right. Yes. These kids know have no idea what the hell we're talking about because everything is digital and the thought of losing anything's no big deal. DocuSign, they mm, yeah. but our contracts were everything. Yeah. Yes. Well, what is interesting is their contracts still sit on servers that somebody else owns. Wow. Got okay. it? Yeah. So there's a lot of interesting things that are going on in the world. Mm-hmm. And you're only as safe as, and again, back to your parents' generation, yeah. when those banks failed yeah, and yeah. that money went away, yeah. the Great Depression came. Yeah, right. Mm. No kid that is on the other side of these cameras right now ever thinks about if they if someone scams their credit card, the bank refunds them. Sort, they don't have to worry. Sort of. No, oh, wait, always. Oh, yeah. I just went through that. Well, we'll talk about it. I'll help you. <laughs> None of these kids, they know that if they get a fraud alert and somebody got their credit card number and spent $2,000 in Vegas, that they'll get that money back. They'll get it back. Every yeah. time. If they didn't, all of them would care about that privacy a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so what's happening is these dynamics are play. It's a long-winded answer to explain this, sir. I believe every contract in the world, uh-huh. every deed, 
every contract, an athlete signing a contract with a football team, that every contract in the world in 20 years will be an NFT. Yeah. It will be a non-fungible token that sits on the blockchain because it is ironclad and nobody can touch it and it's the safest thing humans have ever invented. Mm. Yeah. Do I believe 1% of those things will be collectibles? I do. One of the biggest problems in high art, people that pay $20 million for a painting is if it's fake. Yeah. yeah. In the old world that we all are growing up in now, kind of tricky. Fake baseball cards, fake handbags, yeah. fake art. Yeah. In the blockchain world, not hard. It's on the blockchain, non-touched. So do I believe like trading cards, comic books, marbles, stamps, remember yeah. when that was big? Yeah. Yeah. Do I believe that NFT collectibles will be a thing? Yes, 1% of all the NFTs that are made will be collectible. Mm -hmm. But do I think it's a bigger thing that people are gonna learn? And this is where it gets into. You know how you address fake stuff? By having a blockchain. So for example, do you know what a deep fake video is? Yes. Well, yeah. Proud of you. <laughs> yeah. This is videos, that's right, very good. It's an AI yeah. person. We're about to have all of them. Yeah. There will be millions of videos of me on the internet mm -hmm. in a couple of years saying things I never said. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. right. Yeah. And it's gonna be hard to decipher if that's me or not. Mm. We'll, we'll know, we'll know the real you. Thank you, my man. <laughs> That's gonna change the world. But the blockchain, if I upload all my videos on the blockchain first and prove that it's real and then it goes to the internet, will be a source of truth that the world desperately needs. Right now, as you know, fake news, well, guess what? When the world gets blockchained, it's gonna get a lot better. And so I'm very excited about the future of NFTs and blockchain. Mm. Well, I'm excited with that explanation. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's Thank you. really exciting. Thank you, right? More understand. By the way, that's been the story of my career. If you ask me what's worked for me, for the first seven years that I made content on the internet, it was about wine. Right. Just oh, wine. Okay. But as you may know, and you've also watched wine be something nobody cared about really in America, it was more bourbon and all that, to wine got more popular in the 80s and 90s right. and 2000s. One of the reasons I took off was I was explaining wine in a way that people could understand. Because you know this. Do you, do you know anybody who's really into wine in your friends or family? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, Good. I Nobody's buying library brands. I get it. But you know what, I'm, what, what is happening is, as you know, wine people are pretentious. Very so. <laughs> and so I came along and like, dumb, not dummied it down, but just made it normalized. Yeah. And I do the same thing with technology. I'm an average Joe. Well, and so I can process and explain in that way. You're not exactly average. You were yeah, yeah. born <laughs> with that, with that, that thing in your belly that that's right. makes you the way. That's why you that's didn't right. like to do schoolwork. That's right. Because you were too smart for the schoolwork. That's work, right. But you liked the other parts. When you're 11, yeah. you're kind of older than you think. And I would yeah. look at the world and I'm like, why don't all the straight A students make all the money and have all the happiness? Yeah. <laughs> Like literally, that, that was a vivid conversation I had with myself. I'm like, if A's are so important, why are all these grown-ups that I know, here are the A students I know, yeah. doing just okay financially, desperately not happy. Mm -hmm. Here are some D's and F's and C students, sometimes like that, but sometimes very happy. It was just very clear to me, before I was even a teenager, that success in school did not equate success in life. And How so about I would, the football player who was the rave of the whole school and then later is parking cars? Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. What's popular in high school gets really unpopular yeah. in your 30s. And so, and, and so like that's life. And, that's, and again, that's the, I believe that's the biggest impact all of you can do. And I feel it's the responsibility I have as someone who's happy. I believe negativity has gotten very loud. Yes. Yes. And I believe positivity stays pretty quiet within its circles. And I've taken on the responsibility to be very loud with my positivity, and I hope to inspire sure. others to do so. So, so you, you, you talk about something called practical positivity. Yeah, practical optimism. Optimism. Yes. Practical op. Um, what is that? Yeah, unpack that a little bit. As you know, we all have friends that are delusional optimists. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll give you an example of delusional optimism. I'm going to write my life's goal on a vision board and then I'm gonna sit on my couch and look at it, and it's gonna come true. <laughs> yes. Right, so yeah. what I call practical optimism is you have to work for it too. Right, yes. Like I think there's too much delusion in the world. Like uh, this word manifesting.
Like people, like some people literally think they're Yoda and are going to just think it to real life. Yeah. yeah. And it's because it's an excuse to not do. No, Gary, you don't get it. I'm spiritual. I've been a manifester. I'm like, no, you don't get it. <laughs> like you could sit in an ice bath all day long. If you want to build an empire, you're going to have to work. Like, yeah. by the way, you don't need to build an empire. You can decide to go to the Hudson Valley and sit in an ice bath and live. Like, this is the point that I'm really trying to make. Live the life you want right. to, but be practical about what's coming out of your mouth. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, where people are getting hurt is their mouth is saying one thing and their actions are saying something else. But don't you, don't you think that people say, oh, I'm an optimist and I'm da 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 da, and then they start complaining about whether the Uber driver is there in five seconds? Well, this goes into things I think a lot about. I believe that. I believe complaining is the great pandemic. Thank really you. Yeah. I really do. That's number one on the list. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. See, and again, kids, watch. Look at their body language. There's something to that. Yeah. Again, it doesn't mean things aren't wrong. This is where people get confused. It's yeah. nuanced. Yeah. Yeah. Like people are like, Gary, but what the what about this? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what yes. about it? Like, like yeah. they're like, what about sexism? I'm like, it's real. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, but if you spend every minute of your life Worry about these things. Complaining about sexism and yeah. doing nothing about it. You are going to be very unhappy. <laughs> Thank you. And so, part of the so, problem. Like, and again, there were things that your great grandparents dealt with that were bad. There are things that you dealt with. There are things we're dealing with. And our great grandchildren are going to deal with shit too. Humans are not perfect. But the point of this entire hour together, the point of my mission, the point that I hope the world gets better at is there will always be something. The question is, what are you doing about it? Right. Yes, do yes. something. Don't complain. Yes. That's just absolutely that. right. And, like, and by the way, where this, where so many people have gotten confused, and not just this generation. I love when people are like this generation. What yeah. both boomers on Facebook <laughs> and Gen Z on TikTok, when you say something on social media, that is not doing something. Right. That's the confusion. That's yes. the confusion. What are you doing? And so, you know, for me, when I feel passionate about something. I try to do action. You keep, you want to get into better shape? It's not about reading about push-ups. <laughs> yeah. It's not tweeting that you're going to do push-ups. Yes. It's doing no, fucking push-ups. Push -ups. Very basic. I mean, I can't that, hire somebody to do them for me. <laughs> we are getting to that. I, I wanted to get back, if we could, for the NFT to dummy it down for me. If I do have documents, how do I go about getting them? The question is, yeah, I mean, that goes into something called minting. Okay. So you would, so for you, because I think I can see that we're wrapping up. Your next okay. guest is here. Right, but, and this is a long-winded thing. But this is what I love about your question and for everyone. If you go to how do I mint an NFT, if you type that into oh, Google, yeah. if, you're, if you're like me, you'll have to watch a video or listen to audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, right. of my yes. reading comprehension. Yes. Yes. But if you have good reading comprehension, yeah. there's a million articles on how to do it. And then you do it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Hmm. I love you. Wow. I love thank, you back. Thank you so much for your time <laughs> wow. and energy and just... Making our day and teaching us so much. And will you come see us again? Come yeah. to LA. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. and, and be in a skit on with us. Make you people laugh. In firm. Right. Mint it on the blockchain. <laughs> Mint it on the blockchain. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! New book is coming. The follow-up to Jab 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 Right Hook, originally called Jab 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 Left Hook, but I finally captured what I've been doing for the last 20 years as an entrepreneur, as a creator and influencer, as an operator of a marketing company that works with Fortune 5,000, 500 companies, and really the punchline of what I'm seeing in society, which is day trading attention, how to actually build brand and sales in the new social media world. I'm really proud of this book. It goes so detailed. It goes macro and micro as I like to roll, and so if you've not picked up a copy yet, Go to GaryVee.com slash DTA, which stands for Day Trading Attention. The updated version of the marketing manual for your marketing team. Definitely if you have a social media person that runs your stuff, you need to get a book for them. And definitely the uh, marketers in Fortune 500 for your staff and the entrepreneurs and creators and influencers who are trying to build something for themselves. So proud of it. Hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed putting it together. The manual that we are gonna give to everybody when they join VaynerMedia to read and hopefully the manual to the modern marketing world and especially social media first world. Day trading attention out this May 2024. Pre-order your copy now. Mm -hmm.